When you're installing a bearing, you may have to hand pack the bearing with grease. To do this, hold the bearing in your hand while you press grease in between the rolling elements. Make sure that the grease is distributed evenly throughout the bearing. Pack the bearing one-third to one-half full of grease. If too much grease is added, rotate the bearing slowly to force out the excess grease. Another way to lubricate a bearing with grease is to use a grease cup. A grease cup is a threaded container with grease in it that is mounted on the bearing housing. The top of the cup is turned to force the grease into the bearing. In this topic, we looked at the functions and features of rolling contact bearings and at some common types of rolling contact bearings. We also looked at different mountings and housings for bearings and saw how bearings can be lubricated. Now try some practice questions. Rolling contact bearings can last for years, but eventually all bearings fail. There are several factors that can cause bearings to fail and several specific types of bearing failures. Usually, it's possible to tell a bearing is failing before removing the bearing from the machine. Bearing failures are often accompanied by high levels of noise or vibration, high operating temperatures, and the smell of burnt oil. After a failed bearing has been removed and taken apart, other evidence of bearing failure may be seen. This evidence may include burn marks, which are blue or brown marks on the rolling elements or the rings, spalled areas, which are places where the surface of the metal has flaked away, a bent or broken retainer, cracks in the rings, and discolored lubricant. If the bearing failure is unusually severe, all of these signs could be present, but not all of the signs are necessarily present with each type of failure. Let's look at some common types of rolling contact bearing failures. One type of bearing failure is fatigue failure. Fatigue failure happens to every bearing eventually. It occurs because the bearing has worn out. Symptoms of fatigue failure may include loud noise and vibration, high operating temperature, burn marks, spalled areas, a bent or broken retainer, or cracks in the bearing metal. Fatigue failure is caused by metal fatigue. When a bearing is in operation, it is continually flexing or bending. Although the amount that a bearing bends is very small, it is significant because it is continuous. There is a limit to the amount of bending and flexing the bearing metal can tolerate. After the metal has reached its limit, the bearing fails. Another type of bearing failure is lubrication failure. Lubrication failure occurs when the oil or grease in a bearing fails to function correctly and the bearing overheats. Symptoms of lubrication failure include the smell of burnt oil, discolored lubricant, and burn marks on the rings or rolling elements. Lubrication failure can also be caused by improper lubrication. This could mean too much or too little lubricant, using the wrong kind of lubricant, mixing lubricants that aren't compatible, or using contaminated lubricant. Misalignment failure is a type of failure that occurs when one ring of a bearing is out of line with the other. The primary sign of misalignment failure is unusual wear marks on the inside of the rings. A normal wear pattern follows the center of the ring. Thrust failure occurs when there is more axial load on a bearing than the bearing can handle. The signs of thrust failure include cracked rings, a bent or broken retainer, and loose rolling elements. Thrust failure can occur for a number of reasons, including incorrect bearing selection, improper installation, and excessive installation force.